Hey friends! So, I bet when you think about Revolutionary War history, South Carolina probably doesn't come to mind. But you might be surprised to learn that the Palmetto State was actually at the center of activity in the South, playing host to over 200 battles and skirmishes throughout the war. Right? And now, today, you can visit lots of different historical sites that are aiming to preserve that history and allow people to experience it through education and demonstrations to get a sense of what life was really like in that time. And that is exactly why we are here today in historic Brattonsville. Even though we're only about 20 minutes from the dining, shopping, and outdoor recreation of Rock Hill, South Carolina, we're actually about to take a step back in time about 240-ish years. Are you ready? Let's go for it. Hey, Farmer Eli, how hey, are you? I'm good, how are you today? Good. So, of course, I'm the Historic Farm Program Manager, meaning I'm in charge of all the agriculture and livestock aspects of the property. Also, I am uh, an interpreter, so meaning I dress in period accurate clothes and do different demonstrations depending on what year we're highlighting. So, you said you do a lot of reenactments, I can tell by your awesome outfit here. So, what exactly does that entail in terms of Brattonsville being connected with the Revolutionary War? Well, there was a battle fought here. There was a battle of Huck's Feet, or some people refer to it through the Battle of Williams Plantation. And we actually sometimes recreate that. We do that once a year. And then any given day, we will be in costume as if we're in 1780s. So tell me, what is the significance of the Battle of Huck's defeat? So Battle of Huck's defeat was one of the major battles that were fought down here. It was a very small skirmish, but it had a, a lasting impact. This was actually the first time that the Patriot forces defeated British Redcoats. And so I think between 30 and 40 soldiers were, were killed on this ground. And at that point, the Patriot militia went on to Kings Mountain where they won and went over to Cowpens where they won and ultimately to Yorktown where um, the British surrendered. So what makes this place so good is, you know, we talk about that battle, but you're actually able to go on the battlefield and actually walk with the steps of the soldiers. That's awesome. And so I see this gun you've got here. Yeah. So is this a gun that would have been used in the Battle of Huck's Defeat? It sure. Well, so we have two different models. Of course, this is a Charlottesville. This would be what the Continental Army would have, would have used. Now, there was no Continental Army forces when that happened here in South Carolina at that battle. But this definitely would be for as the South Carolina Continental Army would have used this weapon here versus a brown vest that the British would have used. And also for the Patriot Militia, they were not given guns because they were not sponsored by any government. So they actually had to bring their guns from home to use on that battle. BYOG. Yeah, BYOG. <laughs> any chance you want to try your hand at shooting one? Sure, let's go for it. Now you're going to pull it tight up against you. Mm -hmm. The tighter you are, the better you are. Mm -hmm. Now at this point, you, so move your hand up in here. Yep, just like so. You're gonna put, yep, just like that. Mm -hmm. Just don't be scared of it. It's not, okay. gonna, it's not gonna kick hard. Okay. And so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna. So now only thing you're gonna have to do is pull the trigger. So like okay. I said, what you do is aim at that pond, close your eyes and pull the trigger. <sighs> okay. I don't know if I've ever been so nervous. Awesome. Oh. I see you have changed into a different period garb. Tell me a little bit about that. I have. Of course, what you noticed, my waistcoat got a little shorter, my hat got a little larger. <laughs> um, now, this would be your typical working man's outfit in 1855. But also, you can't come to a farm without seeing animals like we have right here. This is Miss Lizzie. Lizzie! And, uh, can I pet her? You sure can. <gasps> So Miss Lizzie is uh, two and a half months old, and what we want to do is, of course, let's show you the rest of the flock where she comes from. Okay. <laughs> We're about to meet Bert and Ernie. They are hybrid Devon cows, which has been something I've been very excited about when I learned that there were Devon cows here, ah! for obvious reasons. This is Miss Harriet. 
Harriet with the good hair. <laughs> oh my goodness. So Miss Harriet's a Polish chicken. Uh, she's originally from Spain, but when the Spaniards found them, the Polish army had feathers on top of their heads. And so when they saw it, they said she must be Polish. <laughs> But she's South Carolinian. Well, course. she was imported for sure. You know, all our animals were brought in here. All the animals you see here would have been animals you typically see on a farm <laughs> in around the 1855 mark. Y'all, I have had so much fun today. I shot a musket for the first time. I got to play with sweet little heritage breed animals, and I learned a lot about South Carolina's history. I think it's so important to visit places like this. They do such a great job of preserving our history, and it really gives you an appreciation for the way that life is today. So please add Historic Brattonsville to your next South Carolina itinerary, and the next time that you're thinking about trying something new, just go for it.